in heaven and piano starts on a song like that and everything going on, if it was me, I'd be like, y'all keep it down and listen. Listen to the praise. Amen. Gosh, that's good. That runs all over me. Amen. Imagine all of heaven being quiet, just listening. Listen to that. They're praising me. Amen. All right. Take your Bibles tonight. Turn to Matthew chapter 2. Got a great, got a great thought for you tonight. I, I preach out of stuff. I guess I'm getting like my preacher. I've pre- preached long enough now that I feel like I've preached some of these things before. But um, if I have, you just bear with me. It's good. Amen. Lord, the Lord give us a thought <coughs> the other day. And I really love this scripture. It's really about the Christmas story. But there's a whole lot in it, uh, in these verses, and something I want to share with you that I feel is appropriate uh, in the day and time we live in out of this Christmas miracle. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1, is where we'll start reading. It says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came a wise man, or wise men from the east to Jerusalem saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. See, they'll follow leadership. Whether it's right leadership or wrong leadership, people will follow leadership. Do you notice that? He was troubled, and so was all Jerusalem with him. Nothing to be troubled about the Savior coming. Amen. That's prophecy. That's supposed to happen. Amen. But when you're led by the wrong leader, you will follow the wrong way. It says, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Verse number 4 says, And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet." And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also, which was a lie. That's not what he wanted to do. These were really wise men, by the way. They they picked up on that. It says, when they heard, verse 9 says, and when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, I said, and when they were come into the house, come on somebody, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Where'd they worship him? In the house. Oh, that's good. His mother, they fell down and worshipped him and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Where'd they do that? In the house. I can't believe they wasn't at church. Come on now. They wasn't, they wasn't at the synagogue. They was in the house. Come on. Do we worship in the house? We should. You ought to present him. You ought to worship him in the house. You ain't just got to be at church. That's the mindset we grew up in, is it not? Oh, we do that stuff at church. Well, what do you do at the house? We worship him at the house. Oh, I like that. Oh, I'm glad he wasn't in the synagogue. Oh, I'm glad he wasn't in church. I'm glad he was at the house. So much in that right there, amen? It says that when they had come, let's see, verse number 12. I'm getting excited and then lost my faith. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their country another way. When you find Jesus, you always go back another way. Amen? Every time, every single time. 
When I found Jesus, I didn't go home the same way. Amen. The night I found him, I went home a different way. Amen. I went home a different person. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this scripture. We thank you for the opportunity to stand and bring it tonight here on Wednesday night, Lord. God, we, we thank you so much for this night. Uh, this midweek service has seemed so hard to get to and just after work and just uh, the hustle and bustle all week. But God, I, I love Wednesday nights. I, I think it's when the people show up that really want something. They ain't here to put on. They're not here to put on no show or to meet and greet people. We, we do that and we fellowship. But they're here, I believe, to find something, to, to seek something from you. And God, I believe that you give us something out of this tonight. Help us to preach it and say what you'd want us to say and nothing more, nothing less. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, before we get into this, I want you to notice a few things about these guys that found the Lord. The mystery of the wise men and their mission. A lot of times we look at this and we, we kind of have some preconceived ideals based on what we read, how many wise men they were. But first off, I want you to see, we don't know exactly where they came from. We think probably Babylon, but we're not really sure about that. We don't know exactly how many wise men they were. We always think, well, there was three wise men because there was three gifts. That don't necessarily mean there's just three. Could have been a whole parcel of them, amen? Could have been a group of them. This thing had been prophesied for years. I passed down all the way down through Daniel. These gifts had been passed down all the way from Daniel's day. The prophecy and the reading of the stars and the, and the, and the alignment of the stars was finally where it was. I, I beg to differ. I believe they might have been more than three. I believe they may have been a whole caravan full of wise men. Amen. We know that they brought three gifts, but uh, they could have been more than that. But we don't know exactly when they arrived. Amen. I don't think that Jesus was necessarily just born because it says the young child. There's some study that goes into that. Some scholars say he was around two years old. I don't know because we do know that Herod killed all the male children from two years old and down. So some people think he might have been around two. I believe that may be closer to the facts than being uh, uh, a baby. Uh, you know, uh, I believe he was more getting into the toddler years uh, than a baby. We know he was a young child. The Bible tells us that. We don't know how they knew the star signaled the birth of Christ. We do not know how they knew the star signaled the birth of Christ. Amen. But some things that we do know. We know that they were wise men. Amen. I mean, just the, the verse that tells us about the dream and they knew something wasn't right with Herod tells me enough about them uh, that I need to know that they were wise. We know that wise men still seek the Savior in this day. Still seeking God. Why A wise man will seek the Lord. Amen. The foolish said in his heart that there is no God but the wise men seek God. We know that those who truly seek Him find Him, Jeremiah 23, 13 said. Amen. If you seek, you will find. We know that the wise men did not arrive at a stable. Amen. Oh, I like this. This is good. Amen. We know that the wise men found Jesus at the house. Amen. This is what we're going to get into. I'm getting chill bumps. Learning from the wise men in the house in Bethlehem, I want to give you a few things and I'll let you go home. First off, I want you to see it is wise to have Jesus in your house. It is wise to have Jesus in your house. To some, Jesus only lives in church buildings. We grew up believing that. You say, no, we didn't, preacher. Oh, yeah, we did. I did. You know how I know? We go to church and people say, we act a certain way. Why? Because we're in church now. We act differently because we come inside the church doors. We act differently in here than we do outside. And we believed that when we got here, we had to act a certain way. Why? Because this was God's house. Jesus wasn't at the church. He wasn't at the synagogue. He was at the house. Amen? I'm going to hit that all night long. 
He was at the house. Amen. They attend church to feel Jesus in the services. Now listen, we come here as a result to worship Him, no doubt. But we do this anywhere. This this building it, now listen, this building, let me let me I don't want I don't want to downgrade what we have here. Don't don't misunderstand this. But I'm gonna get you. And I've tried, I preached on this before and preached on it several times because we got to get out of the mindset that believes that we act that way here because Jesus lives here. As if he lives in the basement somewhere. Turns the lights on. Gets the piano warmed up. Before we get here, he puts his robe on. Comes upstairs and says, everybody's about to get here, so we got to get the worship on. And that's the way we act, do we not? We have people, and we see people act that way. When we come in church, when I grew up, that's the way we act. I've had people tell me when I was little and didn't know how to act. They say, you don't act like that in church. As if God lived here. That's what I thought. I thought he was here watching me at the church. But see, when you do that, you give yourself the ability to act differently when you leave the church. And we act differently out there. Why? Because we ain't in church no more. We only act churchy when we're in church. But Jesus mm, was at the house. Amen? And that's the way we've been brought up. That's the way we think because we've had that driven into us to think that Jesus is here. And the reason we come here is we gather together in his name. But I want you to know something. If you didn't bring him, he ain't here. I mean, this is just a building. We could be in a pool hall. We could be outside. We could be at your house. We could be at my house and do the same thing. Don't get hung up because we come in the, in the doors and, oh, we're in church. This is a sacred, holy place. Amen. This place, listen, and like I said, I'm not taking away from it. This place is set aside for the worship and the majesty of Almighty God. No doubt about that. I do look at this place differently because of that, because this is where we gather to worship Him. But don't think that He's just here. If you believe that, when you leave, you say, well, whew, we leave that back there, because that's church. But when we get outside the church, we can act however we want to, because He don't live in us, He lives in the building. I know I've been on that before. Hey Amen. I preach that. But, but God really get, got a hold of me about that again. And it is so true. You see that. And you see people act certain ways because they come in the church. Well, 15 minutes ago, you wasn't acting like that on the way to church. Now, I, I'm saying, now, now listen, we come, to, we come up the road arguing. I'm not saying you should come into church arguing because we don't want to hear your business. But don't come in and act like you're just, just loving life. You know, we do that, do we not? I'm guilty. I, it may just be me, but I'm guilty of it. I'll come in and try to put on a smile, and I ain't very good at it. You know that about me. But, but listen, if you tore all the pieces at home, it's okay every now and then to be tore all the pieces in here. Hey Amen, that's the real you. The devil beats your brains out all week and tears you from limb to limb and you come in and say, how you doing? Oh, great, preacher. Life's wonderful. Well, that's a lie. You've been torn all to pieces all week. It's okay to come in and say, it's been rough. It ain't been easy. But I'm here. You know why we come here? You know why I come here? There's times I get off work and, and, and I'm rushing and I get home and I'm like, man, I'd like to just stay home. I'd like to just stay. You say, preach, you shouldn't tell us that. Well, I'm just being real with you. And, and I like to just stay home. And you say the same thing. But you know what? Every single time I make myself out of sure will sometimes come, I feel better when I leave. Let me tell you this right now. I was thinking about this all day. You all are medicine for me. And I mean that. You help me. And I hope that something I say or something I do helps you from the, from the Word. And I've heard some of you. I met some of you after church and say, man, 
Preacher, I really didn't, I didn't feel like coming, but I'm glad I did because what you said made a difference. That's why I come. That's why I do this. I mean, I'm serious. If I didn't think it was helping you, if I wasn't helping you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't study. I wouldn't try to come up. I, listen, God will give me thoughts anymore and, and, and give me something. And, and through the day, just driving down the road, I'll think of one of you. I'll say, that's going to help them. I'll say, that's going to help Joe. That's going to help Angie. It's going to help Taylor. It's going to help Brooks. It's going to help Sam. I just come to my mind. God will bring you to my thought like that. And I'm not saying that just to say it because you're in front of me. I mean that. I do that. And that's what God does. So for me, I was thinking, I thought, I was thinking about this today. I said, why, why do I go? Because you all are medicine for me. I could not make it without this place. But what I'm saying is we can't just worship him here. It has to be Christianity is not something you do. It's a lifestyle or should be. It's something you live. You don't have to try to play Christian if you're Christian. It's your lifestyle. It's who you are. Hey Amen. I mean, Tammy, you go to her shop, Holy Rollers. That, I mean, that's as fanatical as it gets. Amen? Everything about that is Christ. Everything about you, uh, something about you is Christ. I was teaching today. I was, <laughs> this is funny. I was in a training class today, and I was teaching these guys, and, and we, was doing a re, re, um, uh, we was doing a retraining for, for some of the older guys. And I was talking to them about pride and integrity. And I told him, I said, I can teach you how to do this job to, the, to where you will never get a damage. You, you'll be the best employee you can be. But I cannot instill in you integrity. That comes from your maker. That comes from something deeper. And before I know it, I looked back at Earl and I was starting to preach and I didn't even realize it. <laughs> and he said, you going to preach to us? I said, yes, I am. Because it's truth. It's integrity. I said, that's what we need. I can't make you have take pride in what you do, is what I told him. Hey Amen. It comes from something deeper. And that's what I'm saying. And I wasn't even trying to do that, but I caught myself talking to a group of people. I'm like, I'm preaching. I don't even realize it. It just comes out of you. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that like, oh, he's Mr. Perfect running around preaching all day. No, I have bad days too. I say stuff I shouldn't say. I act in ways I shouldn't act. I act in ways I'd never want you to find out about. But I'm saying Christianity is your lifestyle. If you're a Christian, if you live for Jesus, it's going to come out in you somewhere along the way. It's, it's, it's who you are. It's your new nature. Amen? So the wise, it's wise to have Jesus in your house. To feel that they leave Jesus and leave as they leave the meeting, and that's what a lot of people, I believe, still in our day, still believe that. When you do this, as I said a minute, when you do this, it gives you the ability, if you think Jesus is only here, to have the green light to act however you want when you leave or feel like you let take your mask off. And, and let yourself go, and, and you can relax a little bit because you leave because he's at the church house. Have you ever heard somebody, and as I, I probably said this a minute ago, I remember as I said when I was little, I've heard people say, we just don't act like that at church. Really? So you can act like that, you just don't act like that at church. I'll never forget. I'm going to tell on him because he's dead and he can't whoop me. <laughs> My daddy, <laughs> he hadn't been saved very long. This is kind of funny. I think it's funny now. I thought it's funny then, as a matter of fact. We was at church. And <laughs> he got mad at me for something. I don't even know what I was doing. But anyway, I was probably acting up. He looked back at me and he said something. Uh, Keith. And I went, oh. did he say what I think he said? And he grabbed his mouth. He said, you made me cuss at church. I said, no, I didn't. God, I didn't make him do nothing. 
And I said, I said, no, you cussed at church because you cuss at the house. And he, oh, he got mad. He got mad because I made him so mad he said something he shouldn't say at church. And I thought, no, it's because that's who you are. You said something that you say all the time when we're working at the job site. But it's okay when we're doing that. Why? Because we ain't at church. And that's funny. And it was funny then. And I aggravated him about it even after, after that. I said, you're the only man I ever know cussed in church. And I used to aggravate him about that. But, 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 but here's what I'm saying. The thing about that is, he, he, you, see the, you see the perception that we have, the idea that, oh God, I can't believe I said something like that at church. And if you went into our minds right now, some of the things we're thinking. But, but that's okay because it don't come out loud. No, it, you're thinking it. Amen. We'll think things. I think some sometimes I thought, why did I think that in church? I thought, oh, well, maybe because I thought that at the house. Well, sometimes we have some stuff that'll come across our mind. I'm like, where'd that come from? I mean, listen, by our very nature, we're the children of wrath. We're all growing. What I'm, what I, what I'm trying to get across to you out of this, and, and like I said, I know I've been over this before, but oh, it's so worth going over again, but, but what I'm trying to get across to you is to make you see is that you shouldn't have to try to act differently here than you do out there. Now, we all have a little bit of hypocrisy in us. I know that. We all do. I, we cannot say that we don't try because for the main reason is you don't want to come in and, 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 and trouble people with all your problems all the time. I get that. You know, so, so we try to put on a happy face. But don't take it to the extreme that you are somebody here different than the person you are at home. Don't let it take you to that extreme. Because if you do, you'll catch yourself living that way. And you've got to be the way that, look, God sees me all the time. There's no sense in me act different there than I do here because he saw what I did today out there. I might as well be who I am here. As I said, why do we come here? Because you all are medicine for me. I don't come in, we don't come in here to try to show out and see how, see who's a super Christian and who ain't. I try to show people, well, I've been to Sunday school every day this, this year, every Sunday, all year. So I'm going to get a button at the end of the year. And I'm going to wear it on my lapel to show out, to show everybody how awesome I am. Nobody don't care about that. Did you get anything out of Sunday school when you came? Did you grow? Is there anything that, that was taught to you that helped you on the outside? That's what matters. Amen. Because you come because you want to because it's a medicine for you. Because this is, I believe this, and I preach this till the day I die. This place is a hospital for sinners. That's what it is. That's why we come. I want you to feel, I want you to be real enough and feel that you know me enough to know I don't care if you ain't sitting here hooping and hollering all the time. If you got to drag yourself in here and say, Preacher, I didn't feel like coming. Things ain't going so hot in my life right now. But I knew if I could make it something you might say would help me. I'd say, praise God. You sit there. If you want to cry, you cry. If you want to sit there and not say a word, if you don't want to shake nobody's hand, it's okay. I'd rather you just be here. Amen? You know how many times people won't come because they just don't feel it? They stay at the house because they just, I don't feel like going today and I'm not in a good mood and I don't, that's not what I want out of it. I want you to come even if you ain't. If you're here, at least you're coming so you can. That's how we grow. Amen. That's how God, I believe that's where God gets us on a level where he says, now I can work with you. Because you're not trying to fake everybody out all the time. You're not trying to fake, you're not trying to make them believe that mine and your relationship is better than what it actually is. You, you're not there yet, but you're pressing. You see, you're pressing. You continue to press. You know what? Me and the first lady uh, uh, don't have. You, you would come to our house sometimes if you use a fly on the wall and, and she's going to pass out. Amen. 
She said, what's he going to say? What's he going to say? But you can come to our house, and you know what? We're regular people. We don't always act like a preacher and the, and the pastor's wife because we get mad at each other, and we argue, and she wants to kill me and tell God I died, and I want to do the same to her sometimes. But you know what? We just keep pressing and we keep going. Sometimes we come and we might be mad at one another at church. You might not know it, but we are. You ever notice we don't shake hands? <laughs> but you know what? You can't give up. You got to keep going. We're real people, man. You know, and I believe that's why, and that's why I wish we could you get to where people would get this message to see. You know, preachers are just people. They, there's nothing special. It's a calling God puts on one's life, and that's don't, I take don't take that for granted. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm just a man with a message, and that's it. I struggle with the same thing you guys struggle with, and some maybe even worse. Amen. We go through the same stuff, but I need you in my life. That's why I come. Amen. We may not get off this one point, amen, but we, we're going to get something out of it. Jesus ought to be recognized in your house. Not just here and not just something we do on the weekends or something we do on Wednesdays and Sundays, but something we live. Our Lord brought blessings to many houses. The blessings Jesus brought to Peter's house in Mark chapter 1, he healed his mother-in-law. Where did he do that at? In Peter's house. Oh, man. Peter's house. Salvation come to Zacchaeus. Where at? At his house. Amen. He had the best day he ever had. His life changed, not at church. It changed at his house. Amen. Fellowship with Jesus in the house of Lazarus. He raised Lazarus from the dead, not in the synagogue. Who at the house. Out at Mary and Martha's house. Amen. That's where it started. They had a, a, a they had a worship service so good they went out and he was raising people from the dead. People was over at the synagogue reading the books of the law and they didn't know what had happened. Why? Because they we do that. We do that church thing at church. But we don't do the church thing at home. And that's the problem. That's why we got dead churches. Amen? Because people come in here and they're different than they are when they're home. I'll never forget this. A, a preacher, Mingel Love, was telling a story one time about a young man, 18 years old, left the church, would not come home. I think I mentioned it here. Wouldn't come back. They went and visited him, tried to get him to come to church, wouldn't come. Finally, he went to him, caught him on his job. He said, why don't you come back to church? He was there every Sunday. That boy said, because my dad comes there. He said, I'm not going out there because he's phony. He said, he says amen and sings Amazing Grace in the choir. He cusses my mama out at home. He acts a certain way. He acts differently at church than he does at home, and I ain't going there no more. All that boy had ever seen was two different sides. He's seen somebody live differently, so he thinks everybody's doing that. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 so you got to be careful. How we do and how we present ourselves, no doubt. We ought to try to do our best, especially in front of our kids. But my point is, we don't just worship in here. Fellowship with Jesus in the house. Is Jesus comfortable? Oh, it's not hurt. Is Jesus comfortable at your house? Amen? Is he comfortable at your house? You know what you're thinking? You're thinking, what if, I, what if I got in the car with you right now and went home with you? And we walked in at the same time. You say, oh, you, I know what you're doing right now. You're thinking. You're thinking, what I got there that he'd see? <laughs> Amen. What, you, what, what's he, what would he say? Amen. You know what I'm thinking? What would they see? If I got anything and I wouldn't want them to see. But we walk into that every day. God sees it. So why we try to hide it from the people? As if it's okay, long God don't know it, long as y'all don't know it. And I really don't think I got anything that I wouldn't let you see, but 
and you probably don't either. But but seriously, that's how we that's how we do. I remember I remember before I got saved, the preacher would come over and visit, and me and the boys would be out shooting our bows and drinking a few beers. And I, I told him, I'd say, "Here comes a preacher hiding beers." He and the preacher, he's just, like you couldn't smell it. I mean, I don't know why we did that, but anyway. Especially after I got to knowing him. I, he's just like me, so I know he knew it. But is that not how we look, act? We just don't want the preacher to know. Preacher can't save me. I can't do nothing for you. I try to help you with the message, but that's it. I can't, I'm, I'm in the same boat you all are in. Amen. I try to, and I thought, not that, and, and I think more we do it out of respect, and I understand that, but, but, but we do that because that's how we was raised. We don't, we don't want them to know. God knows everything we do. It's on a billboard in heaven, on a big, big, big screen up in heaven. He can see it. He knows everything. And when we're all by ourselves and, and when we're not, He sees it. And that's how we need to live. We need to live the way to say, you know what, if I'd hide it from you, I ought to get rid of it because I need to hide it from God. And you can't, excuse me, you can't hide from God. Number two, as I said, is Jesus comfortable in your house? Is he comfortable with the conversations there? Is he comfortable, oh, this one hurts. Is he comfortable with the attitudes at your house? That one hurts me. With the entertainment at your house. Think about it. You say, you know what, and this is the truth, a lot of times we'll do it. Turn something on, you'll be watching it, and you're like, man, I don't you almost sit and make yourself, and you're like, you're cringing the whole time. And it might not be real bad, but it's right on the line, and you're watching it, and you're like, we don't need to watch that around the kids. No, we don't need to watch that at all. Amen? But that's how, that's how we do. Well, we're adults. We don't, we don't, we don't take that back. We don't, we don't let it enter into our ears. Amen? And we all do that. And like I said, it may not even be something bad. But the whole time you're sitting there, you're, you're like this. You're uncomfortable. You're stiff. You can't enjoy that show if you wanted to. You're too uncomfortable because you're doing and watching something you ain't supposed to be watching. Hey Amen. I'm telling you. I know it's funny, all the animation, but it's the truth. Number two. Not only is it wise to have Jesus in your house, it's wise to worship Jesus in your house. Amen. They fell down and worshiped him. I wonder if it'd be in today if you come over and there's a bunch of people at the house and we're having a big gathering and you come in and you said, Praise the Lord, preacher. I said, Oh, don't act like that. These ain't church folks. These are our friends from college or from high school. They don't go to church. We might freak them out if we act like the way I, the way we act at church. You think you you think differently of me. You you'd be you'd be like that 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 bothers me if I done that. They worship Jesus at the house. Amen. They fell down. They didn't care who was around. They didn't care who was there. They didn't care how many people. And you know when you have a new baby, there's always people at the house. They come in and fell down and worshiped him at the house. Amen? God, that's good stuff. They fell down and worshiped him. Worship lifts the heart. Worship lifts the heart to praise God for all he has done for you and me. Amen? How long since you thank God for salvation at your house? Amen. And I'm sure most of you do this, and I hope you do. How long since you knelt in prayer at your house? How long since you read your Bible at your house? How long since you praised God in song at your house? Do you have a daily worship time in your house or a devotion time? Is the presence of the Lord sensed at your house? And last but not least, it is wise to recognize Jesus as Lord of your house. They opened their gifts to Him. 
Gifts of gold was a symbol of royalty or deity. The Ark of the Covenant was made of gold. Heaven's streets are paved with gold. Frankincense was used for incense in the temple. It speaks of our Lord's high priestly work for us. Amen. I like that. The Lord who intercedes for His own. We pray, Son, that He ever liveth to make intercession for me and you. Praise the Lord, man. That's great. They've done all this at the house. They didn't wait till they got to the temple. They've done this at the house. Amen. Out, out in the world to where everybody in the neighborhood could hear what was going on. To where the next door neighbor said, what's going on over there? Oh, it's them wise men that come from far to praise that baby. You know what it would do? It would let people know who he was if we praised him at the house. You're supposed to act that way at church, preacher. Y'all not act that way at your house. But boy, it would sure turn people on to who he was. I wonder how many people come up when they was worshiping him and bringing that gold and frankincense which showed sacrifice on their parts, no doubt. And because it said... I believe, some scholars believe this funded his journey to Egypt and back up till he was 12 year old. Took care of his family. It wasn't just a, a, a little bit of gold. That was a big thing of gold. It was life changing money. They sacrificed that. They give that. I wonder if the next door neighbors was like, what, what in the world is going on over there? I knew that baby was special, but good night. They're... <laughs> they're treating him like a king. Amen. They're treating him like he's somebody. We might ought to go over there and see what's going on. And the next door neighbors knocked on the door and they opened the door and said, y'all come on in. Do you know who this is? This is Jesus, the Savior of the world. Well, he's just a baby. Yeah, I know, but you, you don't see what he's going to grow into. It's been prophesied. He come to save his people. Amen. From their sin. John the Baptist said he was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And they saw that in that baby. They was worshiping Jesus in the house. Let me tell you something. When you do that at the house, when you do that in the world, it brings attention to him. My guys at work will get online and watch me preach. And they expect me to act like this here. But when we're at lunch and I'm out in the parking lot outside of Moe's at the parking lot and I get to thinking about something or they ask me something and mess up and I start preaching out there, they look funny. Amen? But I just let them have it that the more. Amen? And they like it. They get more excited about that because they don't see people act that way outside of the four walls and the double doors, you see. And that's why I, I was on campus. Aaron knows this. We know this. You come down through there and I heard, I heard a boy. Kids walking right there at Andy Holt and, and Volunteer Boulevard. There's a I mean, there's a pack of them, man. That's a, that's a big place where kids cross, ain't it? Little old boy about their age, standing up, said, have you been saved? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Do you know if you don't know Him, you'll die and go to hell? You know what? I could hear that from Cumberland Avenue. And I come walking up through there, and the closer I got, the louder he got. And I thought, man, that boy's got guts. No, he's just living out his faith. He preached the same way at church as he did out there on the street corner. You know what them kids would walk by, and he said, here, take a track. He's forcing it on them. Here, take one. And read it. Promise me you'll read it. So I look at him and say, I ain't reading that mess and throw it down. He didn't flinch. He just kept on preaching. You could not help but have respect for that boy. 
I was sitting there guarding him. I was fix, thinking they was fixing to throw him in the street, you know. I said, I'll go over and help him if they do. But I was just admiring that and watching it. Matter of fact, I went up through there one time. I said, I appreciate you doing that. I said, that's easy to do that at church behind the pulpit where everybody's there to hear it. It's a whole lot harder out here when these kids don't want to hear it. Man, he preached. And I liked it. You know why? Because that ain't normal. Ain't that sad, really? But that ain't normal. We don't, we don't see that. And, and that's how we ought to be living. You know what? It would be nothing if you walked out and every morning going into your job. Praise the Lord. Amen. How you doing? Well, it's just old Joe. He does that all the time. Praise the Lord, Joe. We're used to that. Hey, man, come on in here. Good to see you. Are you saved? Uh, we're used to, that's Keith, he does that all the time. He's a Christian. Oh, he lives that way. Well, he all just act like that at church. No, he lives like that all the time. Oh, golly. It would change the way we think. You know what? You say, yeah, but we defend people, preacher. That's the problem. That's the lie that Satan has told us. That if we live like that, we're going to be an outcast. They ain't going to like us no more. And, 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 and the thing about it is they, they, they're going to be offended. And we don't want to offend people. We want to love them in. And I get all that. But listen to me. We ought to be bold in our faith. Amen. We ought to be bold in our faith. I'm done. Myrrh speaks of the suffering of Christ on the cross. Commonly used for embalming people. After death, that's something to give a baby, ain't it? They could see what he was going to become. The lamb. Our crucified Lord is who he was going to become. They saw that and they worshipped him at the house. Let's bow our heads.